welcome to WWDC. So, in the recent WWDC event, Apple revealed the next version of its operating system for iPhones, iPads, Apple Watch and MacBooks. It was a long event and most of you might not have seen it. And more importantly, not everything announced is for India. So, this is Badik, you are already watching TechWiser and here are 10 important things you need to know if you use an Apple product or are thinking of buying one in India. First up, FaceTime. The biggest news is that FaceTime is coming to Android and Windows via the web browser. So if your friends have an iPhone and you are on Android or Windows, you can both still FaceTime and have a video call. Earlier, this video calling service was only available on iOS and Mac devices. By the way, gotta love the beautiful Android and Windows laptop they picked. What year are we in? 2010? Now FaceTime also brings an important feature called SharePlay. So now you can share your screen, music or even movies while on FaceTime. How it works is, you share a link of an Apple TV series and now all people in the video call can watch the movie together. Every person in the call will have control of the video. This is more like watching a movie together but virtually. As of now, SharePlay only works on Apple TV Plus but Apple promises to bring it to many services. For India, it will only be present in Disney Plus. There's no SharePlay for Netflix or Amazon Prime. Hmm, now that you have FaceTime on Android and Windows, Apple TV on Android TV, what's next? iMessage on Android? Next announcement was regarding Siri. Unlike Google Assistant, Siri as of today does not work without internet connection. But with iOS 15, Siri will now be able to handle a variety of commands without an internet connection. You can use commands like set up a timer, open Google Photos, hey Siri, set up a second timer. Yes, it can do that. I haven't seen Minal this happy in his entire life, Siri and multiple timers. But more importantly now, Siri processes all your commands on the device. So whatever you speak to Siri will be stored on the device unlike Google Assistant. Let's hope that it comes for the watch too. Another new announcement was the private relay. Now people are calling it sort of a VPN service, but I would call it more of a proxy service that comes with iCloud+. Plus. Let me explain. When you have iCloud Plus account and you're browsing through Safari web browser, Apple will encrypt your data and pass it to two more servers. The first server will assign IP address of your nearby locality and second server will decrypt the website address you want to visit and forward your request. This way, you will stay anonymous. Now, Private Relay, I think, won't let you bypass geographical restrictions and play PUBG or watch block content on Netflix. Hence, you will still need a VPN. But it will unlock websites that are blocked by your ISP and most importantly, keep your data private. All these features will also be provided if you own an Apple One account. In case you don't know, Apple One provides all Apple services like Apple TV, Apple Music, 50GB iCloud starting at only 165 rupees a month. Apple released a new version of macOS called macOS Monterey or macOS 12, if you're counting. The biggest feature in macOS Monterey is Siri shortcuts. Now in case you guys don't know, Siri shortcuts are basically a bunch of tasks that can be automated in one click. You can consider it to be like IFTT or Google Assistant routines where you can just tap on a shortcut and it will send you news, read out your calendar events, much more. Now in the new shortcut apps, you can see a gallery of popular shortcuts created by other users or you can also create a custom shortcut for your requirements. Like if the Mac battery drops to 20%, it can launch apps or send a message to you on your iPhone, etc, etc. Now Siri shortcuts is like a huge box. There are loads of Siri shortcuts that can do amazing things. If you're using iOS and not using Siri shortcuts, I'll try to link some amazing Siri shortcut articles. You can check them out. Another small thing is now you can use your MacBook and iMac as target AirPlay devices. So you can just pick up your iPhone and AirPlay on your MacBook or iMac. This will let you use your MacBook's display and speakers to watch movies or just songs. So suppose you have a family gathering and you want to show them images or videos. It's better to cast them on a MacBook with a bigger display and louder speakers. Next up, oh my god, my favorite moment of the WWDC 2021 is this new feature called Universal Control. With Universal Control, you can use your Mac's keyboard and trackpad to work on the iPad. This will let you do things like drag and drop files between the two machines or use your laptop's keyboard to type 
out spotlight searches on the tablet. Although it's still not clear which devices will support this feature, either M1 or the previous gen. And there's no clarity on what technology is being used to connect both the devices. But it looks like the MacBook will detect the iPad kept close to it automatically. Now, the camera on your iOS app will have an integrated Google Lens-like feature. Apple is calling it Live Text. So now you can point to a paper or board and scan text, copy number or text from it. It's more of like OCR apps, but inbuilt right into the Apple camera app and comes with added feature like copy and paste that text, search for it on the web. If it's a phone number, call that number. It was pretty dope when he selected the phone number on the photo. The most interesting thing about Live Text is Similar to Siri commands, all of the processing is done locally and never leaves your phone. So unlike Google Lens, which uploads your data to Google server, Live Text will do it right on your device. Also, RIP OCR apps and iOS OCR apps weren't good anyways. For the AirPods Pro user, there is one important announcement. Your AirPods Pro will get more Find My abilities, including an AirTag-like proximity view that tells you how far your earbuds are. The AirPods Pro and Max will also be able to tap into the Find My network, connecting other people's Apple devices to show you their location. Note that this will only work with AirPods Pro and Max and not the original AirPods. Now, if you are a developer or planning to get into iOS development, there are a couple of exciting announcements. Number one, you can not only code on the iPad, but now you can also submit your apps from the iPad. iPad will now let you code and submit iOS and iPad apps right from the iPad. But in my opinion, the newer iPads still cost around a MacBook Air, so get a real computer, get a MacBook. Anyways, in case you have your apps on the App Store, Apple will now let you have custom screenshots and app icons for different people. So you might see different icons than other people on the App Store. And on that note, back to you Craig. I'm sorry. So to wrap it up, it was a big WWDC and a whole lot of announcements. You can read more and in depth on techvisor.com. I purposely left out some other announcements like Apple Watch Faces, Apple Photos, which is literally Google Photos, then the Siri third party integration because that still requires a home pod. Anyways, let me know what was your favorite thing from the WWDC 2021 or just Give a thumbs up for this video. Let us know if you would like to see such coverage for the upcoming Windows 11 event. Pratik signing off. See you soon.